Well, good morning. It's Friday. Hope you have a happy, had a happy Thanksgiving yesterday. I went to my son's and had a lot of food and we played some Nerf war in the backyard with floodlights on and uh, ate some pie and came home. <laughs> so uh, we, we certainly have a lot to be thankful for. Regardless of your circumstance or situation, there are people around the world in a lot worse shape and we do need to be thankful. This morning, I want to talk a little bit about faith. Um, in Romans chapter 1, Paul quotes from the book of Habakkuk, um, a, a passage that really became his, uh, his anthem for the justification by faith uh, that says, the just shall live by his faith. And um, the, the, the story about um, what we would call the Reformation when Martin Luther, uh, as a monk, was struggling to mortify his flesh to feel like he had victory over his flesh and uh, uh, he was very disillusioned because uh, really we don't have the power to have victory over our flesh outside of the grace of God and uh, he was reading Habakkuk and he came across that passage that the just shall live by his faith and and that revolutionized his life um, we're, we're told that we're saved by faith by grace through faith, and that not of ourself, it's a gift of God. And I've known a lot of Christians who, um, to my own own uh, regret or, or, or sorrow for them, um, though they wouldn't outwardly admit it, they are still trying to live under the law. Um, like Martin Luther, they, they feel like they have to you know, watch everything they say and do, and if they don't ask God to forgive them, they're going to end up in hell. Well, that was not the intention of the gospel. The intention of the gospel is, is that you put your faith in the one who did do it perfectly, which is Jesus Christ. And you don't feel this guilt and shame every time you trip or stumble because you live by faith and not by the works of the law. Uh, the works of the law, Paul said in, in Galatians, can justify no man. No man can be justified by the works of the law. We're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. And um, when you try to do that, um, again, I think it's Galatians, it says you make the grace of God of no effect. And that's pretty a scary thing when we get to that place. Um, but this morning I wanted to, to talk about this verse in, in a little bit of detail with some things in my study this morning that I came across. First, I want to read to you that uh, verse in Romans 117 uh, from the Living Bible. And um, it says, um, um, it says, the man who finds life will find it through trusting in God. That's the just shall live by faith. The man who finds life will find it by trusting in God. And I think sometimes we, and I include myself in that, we've, we've quoted a verse so many times from King Jimmy that we don't really think about the meaning behind it. And that's why I like, uh, and I know that the Living Bible is not a scholarly translation and it has a lot of flaws. And, and I say that for Bobby Michael's sake because he's always commented how I'm quoting from the Living Bible. But I find the paraphrase refreshing when looking at verses that are pretty common that we can quote out of memory. Uh, the man who finds life will find it through trusting in God. That's what faith is. It's trusting in God. Not trusting in my own works, not trusting in my own ability. It's trusting in God. And that's what justification by faith is. That's what the man who, who trusts in God is the man who walks in faith. Now, the other thing I want to mention is I was looking this verse up in the Septuagint. The Septuagint was a translation of the Hebrew Old Testament into Greek. And this, this translation is what the majority of the New Testament writers quoted from. So if you've ever looked at a verse that Paul said, and you flip back to the Old Testament reference and you thought, these don't sound the same. It's probably because they don't sound the same because... He's quoting from the Greek, Hebrew to Greek translation. And, uh, and of course, Paul uh, spoke avid Greek. That was the language of the time, much the way English is today. 
And, and so the Greek, the, the, the Septuagint, uh, which if you ever see a reference of LXX 70, it was 70 scholars translating the Hebrew text into Greek. And so it says, um, um, it, uh, it, if it, uh, the appointed time draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in it, but the just shall live by my faith. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Um, we, we quote it, the, the New Testament is translated, King James, the just will live by, by uh, his faith. But the Septuagint is translated, the just will live by my faith. Well, who is my? Is it Habakkuk's faith? Is it God's faith? Which brings us to that verse in Galatians that says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so we see that there's an interesting theme here between these two verses. Um, if if it is more accurate that, that the just shall live by my faith, and tying that in with that passage in Galatians, then it becomes the faith that God has, the faith of Christ living in me that gives me the strength to have faith. Isn't it, isn't it just like God to do everything for us, even give us his faith? And um, every man is given a measure of faith, but is the measure of faith given to him uh, the gift of God? I believe it is. I believe without the gift of God's faith in me, I couldn't have faith at all. And uh, praise God for that. Now, I want to just kind of wind this up with the book of Habakkuk because it has a lot of deep meaning. God, um, excuse me, God, God tells Habakkuk something that shook him to the core. He tells him that because of the wickedness of Israel, He's going to bring in the, the, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians. He's going to bring in a nation more wicked than Israel to destroy them, to punish them. And, uh, you know, why would God use someone more wicked than, than our people to destroy us? That, that just totally confused him. And so he went to his tower and he said, I'll go to my tower and I'll think about this. And, and that's when God spoke to him, the just shall live by Faith, his faith, my faith, something, somebody's faith. And then it ends with this beautiful poem, this beautiful psalm that basically says, if there's no figs on the tree, there's no cattle in the stall, if, if everything is empty and I have nothing, then I'm going to trust in God because he's going to make my feet like the deer's feet that run on the mountaintops prancing on top of those high places. And those high places, you know, in Israel, it's where they had the groves that worship Baal. And so basically, the enemy is going to be under my feet, and I'm going to have victory. And I'm going to do it not by anything I can do in myself. I'm going to do it by faith in God, because the just will live by faith. Amen. Now, I'm not sure where you're at physically, spiritually, emotionally, but I do want to encourage you today to don't, after you hear this, don't just pass it off. Um, ponder it in the course of the day or the next week and ask yourself every time you see something that challenges you, you know, am I living by faith? Um, you know, the, the idea is that the, the stalls are empty. There's no figs on the line would be like Walmart is empty. The shelves are empty. And uh, <clears throat> that could be scary, sure. I mean, we've got to be real. We got we, we need groceries. We need to eat. But do you have that God kind of faith that you can experience joy when these things happen or if these things happen? And uh, if not, begin to pray and ask God. You know, there was a man that came to Jesus that said, I believe, help my unbelief. And we can ask for more. I mean, God is honored if we ask for more faith. And we get more faith by using the faith we have. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith without works is dead. And so, uh, really, the mark of faith is, is not works. I don't do works to get faith. I exercise my faith 
by doing works. And uh, <clears throat> speaking of that, great transition. A week from tonight on uh, December 6th, we're going to begin a weekly fellowship group here at my place in Muskogee. And uh, if you are interested, if you live in or near Muskogee, or if you don't, and you're interested in coming, we'll have a little Bible study. We'll have fellowship. We'll have snacks. I used to tell people one of my ministry gifts is eating. And so um, <clears throat> I'm no longer pastoring anymore. But this is my attempt to, again, to use my faith by works and hopefully bless somebody. And so I would love for you to come out if you're interested. Um, private PM me or however you say that. And <clears throat> I will give you the address, the time, and the details. And uh, until then, you know, keep the faith. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace. For by grace, we are saved through faith. And it is not a gift. It is not a work. It is a gift. And so we receive that gift today. We ask you to increase our faith. We ask you to help us to exercise our faith, to walk in faith and not by our sight and not be shaken by any any empty shelves or any empty uh, herds or whatever, but the just shall live by faith and help us to walk in that this day and this week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Uh, I took off work today. I'm going to go see a, a new movie by Angel Studios, whose name I forget. It's about a spy, a, a pastor who's a spy uh, in the attempt to assassinate Hitler back in the day. And it's based on a true story. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. God bless you. And I will see you there in the air.